Tucker Carlson devoted a segment to slamming celebrities and celebrity organizations for donating to bail funds, which pay to get rioters out of jail. And there's some nuance that needs to be brought into this conversation. Now, of course, right now on Twitter, what's trending is Cucker Tarlson, which is so clever. You know, what's really funny about it is that whenever I tweet something they don't like, they call me Pim Tool. It really does seem like the best thing they can muster is just inverting the first letters of your first and last name. Congratulations. You've discovered a first grade insult. We have this story from Insider. Tucker Carlson suggested rapper Lil Nas X and others, quote, helped incite riots by donating to organizer bail funds. The celebrity responses were priceless. No, the, res- the celebrity responses were kind of dry and <laughs> inane. I mean, they made their comments. Tucker made his. Honestly, I-, I looked through Lil Nas's Twitter account. I haven't really seen anything. So maybe I'm missing something he may have said, but I don't see the dude inciting riots or anything. I do think there is a bit of naivete in donating to the bail funds of a lot of these organizations, but it is fair to point out we're dealing with two very distinct things with a slight overlap. There are peaceful protesters. The Peaceful protesters are awesome. They did this one thing where they all laid down in the street. Totally cool. There were protests, I believe it was in another location. It might've been DC. I'm not sure. The peaceful protesters actually stopped some dude who was like an Antifa guy. These people are all right, man. And so if these people are minding their own business, doing their peaceful thing, and then a conflict breaks out between police and protester, and somebody wants to pay the bail fund for that, I honestly don't have a problem with that. However, we also have the extreme, the opportunistic looters who may actually get lumped up in with the protesters. It's not necessarily the fault of the protesters this happens, but the bail funds will be used to get some of these people out of jail as well. And then you have the overlap. Ideological extremists who have been arrested for committing overt acts of violence against police, and they are going to get bailed out as well. There's no proper solution to what this is. Tucker Carlson, I think, goes a little far in saying that's inciting riots by paying the bail funds for a lot of these people. But I don't know what what you do when you have an overlap like this. In the end, people are going to draw the line and say, here's what I think is more important. Some people are going to say, dude, don't bail these people out because the rioting is getting insane. And you might actually bail out someone who committed a crime. While others are going to say everyone is, is, is innocent until proven guilty. And it's better that, you know, innocent people's escape than innocent than, uh, than guilty. I'm sorry, it's better that guilty persons escape than innocent people suffer. All that really matters is in the end of all this, people are going to choose the media they want to consume and use that as the basis for how they view the world. Unfortunately for us, what this means is that you have a a left in this country that is notorious for only consuming left-wing media. They're now shocked because the only thing they see is police brutality. You then have moderates and conservatives who mix up their their view on things. So of course, conservatives made this video go viral where they stopped the Antifa guy and give him to the police. They were all cheering for it. And many people on the left see this and say, see, we're stopping the extremists. But what the left is missing is that a lot of these people who are claiming to be protesters are going around, sma- going around smashing windows and stealing stuff. I put out a tweet. It's a picture of a woman and she's holding a Black Lives Matter sign. And the next picture is her running out of like, you know, running on the street, carrying a bunch of stuff. I don't know if that means she was looting. I can't accuse her innocent until proven guilty. And it's just a photo. But I think it's fair to point this out, man. You are not you, you are being taken advantage of. And I can't tell you what there is more of. I honestly do believe there are substantially more peaceful protests. I do believe that there is a lot of police overstep, overreach and and excessive force and brutality. Now, it's a sliding scale, not acting like every single cop is going around beating every single person. But come on, man, there have been some really messed up photos and videos, right? You've got the, the, the guy, the cop shoots him nearly point blank in the face with a tear gas canister. That's insane. You got the homeless guy in L.A. And this is crazy. I don't know if you've seen this video or this photo. Homeless guy in a wheelchair, face covered in blood. And there's a cop pointing his, his you know, uh, t- canister rifle, whatever it's called, at the homeless guy. The other cops look like they're yelling at him, like, no, no, like, don't do this. And these, these, these things go viral, man. So listen, there are real criticisms to go around for every single person. The ultimate challenge I, I, I see is that, for one, man, I think Tucker Carlson is making a good point in calling out all of these celebrities. Not necessarily for the same reason, right? Let, 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 me, let me read the story. And I've got a lot more I want to talk about because this is going to blow your mind. What's happening now was actually passively predicted in 2012. Let me show you this real quick. This is from Vice, 
2012. This is from before I got hired at Vice. 2012 is BS. 2020 is when we're really when we'll really be in trouble. And you know why? This dude straight up says cycles of violence are on a fifth. Uh, it's a it's a 50 year violent uh, cycle of violence. So ignore 2012. You know what's going to be bad is 2020. And he says he thinks it's going to get violence. It's going to get violence. There's going to be a ton of violence. Yeah, <laughs> that's happening. Maybe 2020 is the start of all this, man. I don't know. But let's uh, let's read some of the story. Show you what Tucker, what, what, well, what they claim Tucker Carlson said. But I, I want to talk about Tucker. They say Janelle Monet, Kilani, and Harry Styles are part of an outpouring of celebrities who have donated to organizer bail funds civil rights organizations, and other efforts to support the ongoing protests against police brutality and anti-blackness that have erupted across the U.S. Anti-blackness doesn't really mean anything, so I don't know what what they're trying to reference with that. But on Friday night, Fox News commenter Tucker Carlson suggested these celebrities are, quote, paying to get violent rioters out of jail. Carlson listed a number of prominent celebrities, including Seth Rogen, Steve Carell, and Blake Lively, for donating to various causes as pictures of their headshots scrolled quickly beside him. In particular, Tucker suggested Grammy award winning rapper Lil Nas X helped incite riots by telling his 4.7 million Twitter followers to donate to protester bail funds in Chicago, New York and Philadelphia. Imagine if he used those followers instead to help small businesses destroyed by the riots he helped incite. I looked through Lil Nas's Twitter account. There's 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 him saying, like, we're going to press on this. We're going to push on this. He's posting videos of police over uh, over H1 videos, uh, uh, I would say it's definite excessive force. The cops pull up and fire pepper balls at a group of young black men. Man, these things are happening. And, and, and you are right to speak out against the state repressing citizens, minding their own business. Now, there's an overlap, and this is where things get challenging. Within the peaceful protests, you have a section of people who are ideologues who want to riot and incite violence. These people will get arrested. On the other side, you have opportunistic looters, and there's the overlap between them. I'm not, look, man. I, I, I do kind of roll my eyes at these celebrities who are donating all this because they're just vapid and they have no idea what they're talking about. That's the bigger issue. Lil Nas X says this man just lied and told millions of people on national television that I was inciting riots. You can't make this up. Well, I'll tell you what, man. It's 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 an opinion. It is. It's not it's not fun. It's not fair. I don't like it. I think Tucker should not have gone as far as to say they're literally inciting violence because some of the people who are getting bailed out are looters and rioters. I think that's an inherent problem. But I got to lean towards liberty on this one. So what do we do in this regard? I honestly don't know. I don't like the idea of people being presumed guilty. Where there, there's the assumption that every single person who's getting arrested was is, is caught doing something specific. No, man. Look, in 20 uh, early 2012, I was filming a protest in New York, and this was this was uh, this was direct civil disobedience. It wasn't violent. It was protesters running through the streets. The police grabbed a photographer off the sidewalk and arrested him and lied in their paperwork and under oath. That blew my mind. They lied under oath. That was crazy. The lady claimed he was he was blocking the street. Never happened. Fortunately for this guy, I'd been live streaming at the time. And so when the court saw that he was actually minding his own business on the sidewalk and they arrested him for no reason, the charges were immediately dropped. I was angry that there were no charges brought against the cop who lied under oath to falsely prosecute a photographer who did nothing wrong. The really sad thing about it is that photographer was actually going down to document the police side of the issue to support them, saying something to the effect of, we only ever get the protesters perspective on this. And he wanted to show what the police were doing and what they were dealing with. And they, got, they, they went and arrested the guy. That being said, I'm not saying every single person arrested was falsely arrested. There is a real, a, a real ethical conundrum in if you have, you know, a thousand protesters and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 instigate the conflict between police, you now have, you know, hundreds of protesters or, or whatever. What, what number did I give a thousand? You now have a, a large group of protesters who did nothing wrong, who are standing there under the First Amendment and the police move in to clear things out and people will end up getting arrested. We also have videos popping up all over New York where the, these cops are doing are make, making arbitrary arrests. I'm sorry, man. I lean towards uh, uh, Blackstone's formulation. It is better that 10, 10 guilty persons escape than one innocent person suffer. But this is what I, this, 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 you know, here's the main point, right? I don't care about these cities anymore. They deserve what they get. They vote for it. They get it. And the people who don't like it don't speak up. They don't get what they want. So why should I care? I got to be honest. 
If these cities are burning, okay, and the people who live in these cities will not stand up to stop it, what do you want? What do you expect from from anybody else? Look, man, we just saw 57 uh, emergency response team members in Buffalo resign in protest over these two cops that were like yelling at an old man. They pushed him. He stumbled backwards, falls, hits his head and bleeds from his ear. These two cops got suspended. And then they said that uh, they, they were going, it was a criminal, criminal probe against them. It really does seem like these guys were just being a little aggressive and it was an accident. But hey, man, you got to be responsible for accidents too. Does that mean you lose your job? Uh, suspension, maybe. Criminal charges? I mean, come on, man. You're going to lock up a guy because he, he, he pushed on someone's chest and the guy fell back and hit his head. I don't think he was intending to commit any kind of crime like that. But my point is, who in these cities is coming out now and defending that police department? Are the residents coming out in protest saying, we love our police, we defend our police? No, they're not. I mean, maybe some of them, but they're not doing it. So let me tell you what you get. In Buffalo, the police go out to do their job. Some bad stuff happens. Then the protesters keep saying, defund the police, break them up. Uh Uh-huh. And where is anybody else? So I got no sympathy for these cities, man. If celebrities want to donate and allow these people to get out of jail and, and do their thing, well, then so be it. If you live in this city, and, and, I, and I mean this with the utmost respect, and you refuse to go out and defend the police if you support them, then don't be surprised when they resign en masse. And if you are not donating to police organizations and Community Watch, well, I don't know what to tell you, man. The celebrities have a lot of power. They're going to get these people out of jail. But there is a serious problem in this country, and it has more to do with the size of our cities and less to do with whether it's right or wrong to bail people out. At the core, at the individual level, it honestly is right to bail people out. We shouldn't, we have the presumption of innocence and we have a serious uh, conundrum in locking people up under the words of a state actor before it has been proven in a, uh, by a jury of their peers. This is a, listen, early on when the founding father said this, is how we want to run things it made a ton of sense. I mean, you got a small group of people, right? The jails were tiny. Now these cities are massive, dense pockets of cubicles where people are stacked on top of each other and everything sell, smells like sour milk. I know it's, you, you, it's funny because I bring up the sour milk thing all the time. Trust me, dude, go to New York, walk around Mid- Midtown Manhattan. You're going to be like, this place stinks. You walk near the edge of the street. It really does smell like so I, when I was growing up, the school would throw away the old milk from the lunches. That's the smell, man. That's the smell. So here's what happens in New York. You get a bunch of police who don't know or care about these individuals because there's just too many people. They go out and do what they got to do. Celebrities then bail them out. We're looking, we're looking at a, a, con, a, a saturation problem. If the people of these cities refuse to support the cops and the people in these cities continue to support the protesters, then I think it is the duty of the police to resign. You know what, man? You got a thousand citizens in a town, 10 of them protest saying disband the police and the other 990 refuse to speak up for the police. Guess what? That's 10 votes for disbanding the police and 990 abstained. That's why I'm just like, why am I going to sympathize with, 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 with the NYPD in New York City? It's a big Democratic controlled city. This is what I try to explain to people, man. I grew up in Chicago. The whole thing is, is Democrat supermajority and it was run like trash. I just found out apparently they tore down all the housing projects by like a few blocks from where I grew up. I didn't even know that happened. I don't care about these politicians and the people who keep voting for them. Well, then you get what you voted for. Tucker, I don't think you need to sympathize with the cities that voted for these things. And if the celebrities want to donate to them, let them do it. That's how the cities are being run. Maybe these people in the cities need a cold splash of water in the face to figure out why they need to speak up and vote for better leaders. Sean King, of all people, tweets this out. He tweeted out, stop telling us to vote. He said, Democrats are running all of the cities where the worst police brutality is happening. And I'm like, he's right. That's why I didn't like living in Chicago. Super corrupt, all Democrat, always loaded with problems. These people are protesting what's going on in Chicago. It's not the Republicans' fault. The Republicans aren't there. The Republicans aren't running these things. So I'm, I'm, I, you know what, man, this is why I don't want to live there. Now, I'm not here to say that Republicans would do a better job. I think it's just cities keep voting for these leaders and they get the leaders they deserve. Maybe there's not enough people in cities to vote for a better, uh, maybe there's not enough people in these cities to vote for a better leader. Well, then what do you expect, man? So look, 
Let me let me jump over to this article and we'll talk about the, the escalation of violence. The point I want to make ultimately is this. I always will side with individual liberties and freedom. Maybe not, not always, not always, right? I think we have a conundrum with bail reform. I've talked about this before. I think it is it is noble and pure to want to make sure that people accused of crimes are innocent until proven guilty. I mean, it's right there in the Constitution, man. So that means if somebody in New York gets arrested and we say you can only get out of jail if you give us money, that's not innocent until proven guilty. You're, you're, you're putting a, a weight on someone who might not be able to actually pay that and it could destroy their lives. The problem there, though, is that it, re- it releases overt and obvious criminals who then go and commit crimes again. That's why I don't think I know the answer. I'm not a, an anarchist. You know, on the political compass, I am mostly on the libertarian left spectrum. But that means I still do believe there must be some security and authority. And that means the trade off is a little bit less freedom, a little bit less. I mostly lean towards the freedom. So if people want to donate to bail funds, I think it's naive. I think they don't know what they're, what they're donating to. And I also think a lot of these people I'll tell you what, man, these celebrities who are donating for this stuff, let them do it, man. Don't complain about it. You know why? Remember that guy, Chris Palmer, who was like, the riots are awesome. And then they came to his house and he was like, oh, no, the riots are at my house. Let them have it, dude. These people live in Los Angeles. And I just I just don't get it. Do we? Why? why, why? I'm not fighting you. I'm like, I don't live there. I don't care. You do whatever you want. These celebrities in L.A. are donating to bail funds in other cities. But are there Republican controlled cities and conservative state and red states where rioters are destroying everything? I know. I know. We've seen stuff in, in Utah a bit. But for the most part, they're donating to people who are in blue cities. You got Ilhan Omar saying abolish the police. And I'm like, I don't care. Somebody messaged me saying, hey, man, I live in the city and I, I, we need the police. And I'm like, then you better get out there and defend them. If you don't want to defend the cops who you think are good cops and protecting you, then don't be surprised if they no longer, if, if don't be surprised if they resign. I can't blame them either. Who would want to work a job where no one supports you, dude? I, I'm, I'm not into it. But take a look at this in, in regards to everything that's going on. Maybe I'll say this for a bigger segment later because we got the Boogaloo boys and stuff, you know, uh, things like that. You've got all the media trying to claim that the Boogaloo is a far right movement or whatever. It's absolutely not true. Man, I'll tell you what, I know far leftists who use the phrase boogaloo. It is the current slang term for civil war. Left and right use it. They try and claim it's a right wing thing. It's not. It's a really, really short article. But this guy basically says, Peter's work suggests that peaks of violence in the U.S. work on a 50 year cycle with the next state of upheaval set to hit humanity in 2020. It's sort of like that 20, 2012 mind apocalypse nonsense, except Peter's theory is the result of the hard work of modern living and well-respected scientists rather than a bunch of dead Central American dudes from hippies, uh, uh, American, Central American dudes whom hippies like to talk about while taking heavy psychedelic drugs. We spoke to Peter to find out what's supposedly going to make the U.S. descend into a horrifying dystopian pit of violence in eight years time. Wow, was this guy spot on? Isn't that amazing? This article has been going around. Dude nailed it. Not completely, but he, he, here's what he says. He says, historical studies show that society goes through long-term cycles of violence. There's a buildup for roughly a century, then a period of violence or upheaval for 10 or 15 years. Then people get tired of it, and the next generation goes back to being peaceful. It's then the grandchildren of that generation who never experienced the severity of upheaval firsthand, who are likely to start causing problems again. My theory suggests that it will be 2020, when the U.S. hits a new peak of violence. He was asked, what does the term violence include in regard to your theory? He said there are three distinct kinds of violence, group on group, group on individual, and individual on group. Individual on group, he says, is like these people who show up and commit, you know, these, these, these mass acts of, of tragedy, to say the least. He mentioned some specific, specific examples, which I'm sure you're aware of. He was asked, in your view, what causes these upheavals? Historically, the trouble has always come from people with power. And the number of those people who want the most power, there are too many political entrepreneurs who are all trying to get power and they get frustrated, which is how revolutions start. When members of the elite try to overturn the political order to better suit themselves, this dude hit the nail so hard on the head with the hammer. He drove the nail straight through the two by four. Think about it. Come from the people with power. Uh, Who are the progressive activists that are trying to foment revolution and rising up and complaining? Are they upper class white people? According to the Hidden Tribe study, yes. And who's 
funding these people? Is it the poor uh, revolutionaries trying to fight against Big Brother and the government takeover? No, it's the wealthy elites in Hollywood who are paying the bail for these people. Bravo, good sir. It's actually quite incredible. All of this hate and anger is coming from elites who want power. They don't like that Trump won. They want to seize it. They want more. And they're fighting each other. Joe Biden and the Democratic establishment are, are at odds with the, with the weird intersectional cult. But they all want power. There's a revolt going on at the New York Times. Seth Rogen, Steve Carell, Lil Nas, all these celebrities, all of these elites who want to overturn the established political order, they want more power. Abolish the police, they say, as they donate all of this money to bail out a lot of these people. So listen, man. There's no easy solution to this, right? I understand why you want some people locked up. I understand what Tucker Carl is saying, but I'm sorry. I'm much more libertarian than Tucker Carlson apparently is. And if you are going to have, I'll I'll put it this way. If you are going to have a system that has the presumption of innocence and someone wants to pay the bail for people, I, I, you know, I'll roll my eyes at it. I'm not going to do that. I personally helped. I donated to a small business owner who had his business destroyed. Like Tucker was saying, imagine these people did. Well, that's what I did. So I can respect that. I can agree with Tucker saying. However, I also recognize why you'd want people to be bailed out because there are a lot of peaceful and innocent protesters who get caught up and get arrested for no reason. And the cops are not innocent in all of this. I'm not saying every cop, I'm not saying every protester is a rioter. I'm saying there are some bad cops who are, who are out on video right now. And there are rioters who are trying to manipulate these prote- uh, manipulate the protests in the end. All I can really say is you're, you're, you're going to find people who say, no, this side is the right side. No, this side is the right side. And I don't, I don't think there's a right side necessarily. I think it's people fighting for power and they're going to get violent. And so I'm, I'm having none of it. You know what I hope, though? I think things fall back to the Constitution. I hope they do. These people want to burn it up, you know, no, no doubt. But I hope it does. And people start taking responsibility for themselves. Plain and simple. If these rioters are going to get bailed out, well, they're presumed innocent until proven guilty. That's just how our system works. In which case, you must be responsible for your safety and your community. If you won't defend the police and you don't like what's going on, then you got to leave. Otherwise, the police will be disbanded and you will be left wanting. But the responsibility is yours. You cannot sit back and just believe everything will be taken care of for you. Interestingly, we have these entitled wackos who think they deserve everything actually getting up and causing a ruckus because they're actually trying to demand things they want. And we have people who know you don't deserve everything, not defending the institutions they support. In which case, the conclusion is obvious. So here's what I recommend. Get away from the cities. I'm doing it because I don't see this being resolved anytime soon. And get yourself a firearm to defend your family. I'm lucky enough that Steven Crowder is sending me a SIG M4A and SIG Sauer, I guess. So there it is. Here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm getting away from the cities. I've been slowly doing it because I can see what's coming. There's no clean, logical way to break through this, what we're facing. And I think if the cities don't want cops, let them get rid of their cops. The cops who resigned, you did the right thing by resigning. I'm happy they did it. I am. You know why? If everybody stood up and said, you need me and you'll see, we will. And I'll tell you what, there's some out there. Here's some potentials. Let's let's say all the cops in Buffalo resign over what happened. Let's see how the city handles having no police. If it works for them, good. It it worked out. Win win for everybody, right? If it turns out it doesn't work, well, you've reaped what you have sown and they will come crawling back in seconds. Maybe people need a reminder of why we have individual responsibility. That way you can go out and defend the institutions you like and you can and and you can stand up for what you believe in. But don't think for a minute that you as an individual who is upset with the protests can sit around doing nothing and win. I'm sorry, man. I'm not trying to come down on anybody. But for right now, we got a bunch of we got a bunch of people, rioters and looters who think they're entitled to everything going out and committing these acts. You can't sit back and think the police will do everything for you. Maybe members of the community need to go out and link arms and guard their businesses like those young black men in Ferguson did when I was covering it. That's responsibility. That's people saying it is my responsibility to protect my community. Good for them. We'll see how things play out, man. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.